All right, we're going to try this again. This is Friday, December 7th. Let's see how well things work. I'm going to try and give you the speedy version so we can get straight into the reading and get to the good stuff. Homework, if you have it today, go you. The novel homework is technically now not due till Monday because I didn't want to have to deal with it today. So I pushed it back, and you're going to need to bring your keyboard if you have it on Monday because we're going to typey typey things. Final book report is due Wednesday. Toys for Tots, the last day is next Friday. Caps for Bead Points, the last day is next Wednesday. The tie game was Christmas Trees. Um, if everybody in the class turns in their book report by Wednesday, then I'll give the whole class candy. If in one person doesn't turn it in, no candy for the class. If you're worried that the class is losers and they're going to ruin it for you, if you turn yours in before Wednesday, you're going to be guaranteed candy. Then, let's see, I'll check when we're going to get to page 81. Uh, homework from there. Let's see, we got through the pranks already. We did the, so the first prank we talked about was the what's in the lunchbox? Snake, so, snake, snake, Tyler. And then we got to the snake that was in there. Uh, let's see, and then from that one we went to, oh, the, the diary. Uh, and that was a what's your face? The, um, Vera. Vera, thank you. The popular girl Vera. And then I think we did toast? No, not toast. Trumpet. And what was it? The trumpet? Slime. 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 Slime was in that one. And then we got to Drew Landers. And what did they do to Drew Landers? Paint his toenails. That's when they paint his toenails. And then after that one, uh, oh, the basketball player, what did they do to him? Oh. They, they, they put green put stuff under his arm. Yeah, oh, and he used colorblind, so he thought the green slime was blood. And then they did two people at once with both Tommy Nichols and um, Austin. <coughs> and what did they do to them? They uh, they uh, took uh, Octavio, uh, which is Tommy Nichols' spider, and then put it on her arm. Oh, 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 once again, just a bug. Um, what are you asking? Oh, what's up, Bob? Uh, for those of you at home, there's a bug flying around my room, and the children are acting like they've never seen an insect before. I have an actual kind of a frightening idea. Hey, Bob. So, page 81. We'll keep going from there. It was the third Friday after the signing of the charter, and as usual, we met at Stonehenge. From the very beginning, the place seemed to have some mystical meaning for us. Those moss-covered stones around the dark pit. Now, there was even more meaning. It was our hideout, our special place. The only place where we could swap stories about who did what to whom and how well the pranks worked. We celebrated our victories down in Stonehenge. The rains had passed. The wind had brought down new firewood from the trees. And the sun had dried it off for us. So we had a good fire going by the time the sun fell low in the sky. As we talked, a big bag of marshmallows went around the circle until each marshmallow sat roasted in our stomachs. Did you see the look on Vera Donaldson's face as she went around tearing the copies of her diary down from the classroom doors? Asked Abby. Classic, said Jason. You know, the next day, Cheryl added, all the eighth graders started asking her out. And I don't mean the big eighth graders. I mean the puny ones, like Martin, that look like seventh graders. They figured that because she liked Martin, she must like younger guys. She nearly died of humiliation. I love it, said Abby as she brushed her hair, which she did a lot. Wait, 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 said Derek. If you want to talk about the look on someone's face, how about the second Austin realized there was a spider on his head? Or the second it slipped down his shirt, cried O.P. Classic, said Jason. Intense, said O.P. That spider was great, man. It's like the thing knew exactly what we wanted it to do. I wish I could have seen it, said Jason. We should make that spider an honorary member of the club. Yeah, too bad it's dead, said Darren, shoving a marshmallow into his mouth. You're all wrong, said Randall. The best, no, no, the absolute best thing ever in the history of the whole world was the look on Drew Lander's face as he took off his socks in the locker room in front of the whole team. And none of you got to see it. Tell us about it, said Abby. Okay, said Randall. Everyone in the club was listening. The whole... Sorry, try again. Okay, said Randall. Everyone in the club was listening. 
The whole team was done changing, except for Drew, when the coach passed through the locker room on his way to the pool. I started asking the coach questions to keep him there. You mean the coach was there too? I'm getting to it. <laughs> I love it. Anyway, the coach starts telling me that, as usual, I'm in all of Drew's races. And, as usual, I knew he'd take first place. Then, just like I predicted, Drew takes off those filthy, dirty socks. Jared, you did such a good job of painting his nails. It was incredible. Incredible. I could have died. Anyway, Drew didn't even notice it at first. He put his bathing suit on and didn't even see it. But the coach saw it. Oh no, I screamed. This was great. Classic, classic, just, just classic. Shut up, let me finish, okay? So the coach sees him, toenails and all. They were fire engine red. You couldn't miss them. And the coach just says, uh, Drew? your feet. And everyone looks down at Drew's toes. Nobody laughs. Everyone thought it was for real, you know? Like, Drew did it all by himself. Everyone's saying, wow, and I don't believe it, and stuff like that. Finally, Drew looks at his feet. Then he turns to the coach, his eyebrow and face all wrinkled up, like he's about to sneeze, and he begins stuttering, like, I... I, I, uh, 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 and he tries to hide his feet. And that's when the team starts to laugh. I swear, those painted toes were the most ridiculous thing in the history of the planet. I love it. Classic. Intense. So anyway, Drew can't get a word out. He's so embarrassed. And then, get this, the coach starts laughing too. At that, any of us who were holding back couldn't hold it any longer. We all began to laugh, laughing our heads off because we humiliated Drew Landers. Hmm, kind of sick, huh? When Randall regained control of his laughter, he finished the story. This is the best part. While we all sat there laughing at those stupid red toes, Drew Landers, Mr. Macho Swimmer himself, began to cry. Yes! Revenge! We all got our revenge, and the more they humiliate us, the more revenge we're going to get. Everybody agreed. Even O.P., shy little O.P., was all smiles there at the campfire. It seemed that beneath that quiet, brainy exterior lurked a kid just like the rest of us, who just loved every minute of our little pranks. Hey, everybody, I'd like to read something to you. All eyes turned to O.P. as she pulled out a piece of paper. As you know, David Berger, Jason's mortal enemy, had green slime mysteriously loaded into his trumpet. Everyone chuckled. Well, I would like to read you this small poem that came out in the high school paper this week. Not junior high school, the high school we made the big time, I said. Okay, listen to this. She unfolded the newspaper clipping and began reading. The team was on the field, and victory was at hand. Yes, everything seemed wonderful. Then David slimed the band. He did it with such style and grace you'd think that it was planned. Not one musician got off clean. When David slimed the band, the flutes were sprayed with sticky goo, their players filled with scorn. The band leader got slimed on too when David blew his horn. The football players turned their heads and heard the band all say, There is no doubt we are grossed out as they all ran away. Next week they'll all wear raincoats and gloves upon their hands. Blame it all on one trumpet call when David slimed the band. Excuse me. We were all in stitches, laughing so hard our stomachs began to hurt. You ever have one of those laughing fits where one person's laughter keeps feeding the others and until nobody can stop? That's what it was like. Between the slimy and the tarantula and the nail polish and the diary and the snake and the green blood, it was just too much for any group of human beings to handle. We just had to laugh and laugh. Finally, about five minutes later, we came down off of our laughing fit, wheezing and wiping our eyes dry. The fire had now become full and furious. 
sending sparks sailing into the dimming sky. We all relaxed, and I found that somehow, during the laughing fit, I had ended up leaning back, my head resting comfortably in Cheryl's lap. I looked up at her. She smiled at me. She was playing with my hair. The strangest thing about it was that I did not feel uncomfortable at all. I would say foreshadowing, but I'm guessing you're probably figuring out what's going on. This is classic, said Jason. And although he said that quite a lot, we knew exactly what he meant. Even though most of us had barely known each other three weeks ago, right now, at this one moment in time, we would all agree that we were the best friends in the world. I looked up at Cheryl, whose hair was dangling just an inch above my nose, and smiled. And that's when I heard it. We all heard it. I snapped up out of Cheryl's lap, and we all turned our heads to listen. What was that? Shh! We all listened, heard it again. The scraping of branches, the crunching of leaves. Something was out there, just above the pit, on the other side of Stonehenge. We were all thinking the same thing. No one ever saw any bears in these woods. I mean, but Ralphie Sherman swore that once, Bigfoot came up to him and then ran away. Of course, Ralphie Sherman also swore that he was picked up by one-eyed aliens taken to a distant galaxy, then returned in time for evening television. So, no one much trusted Ralphie Sherman. Still, you never really know. There were also stories of a mountain lion who was shot by a family hiking only 30 miles away. None of us had any weapons. There were deer in the woods, but what if it wasn't a deer? We were all silent and could still hear the faintest movement just a few feet away. I sniffed the air. Perhaps if it was some large animal, I could smell it. But all I could smell was the smoke from the fire. And then I said the stupidest thing that has ever been uttered by anybody on the face of this earth. Um, I'll go check. Nobody else volunteered. I slowly stood and walked over to the dirt slope where one corner of Stonehenge had caved in dozens of years ago, and I made my way up. Now, on the other side of Stonehenge, I was all alone, and for all I knew, this could have been the end of my life. Still, I forced myself on, because waiting there in the middle like a sitting duck wouldn't do any of us any good. I walked around Stonehenge, and I heard it again, moving branches. There was no mistaking it. Something was up here just around the corner of the old stone foundation. My heart began to beat faster. If I could just get a glimpse of it before it saw me, I'd be all right. If it were a deer, fine. I'd go back down, case closed. If it was something worse, I could warn everyone, and then we could scatter. We'd have a better chance that way. Of course, if we scattered, the thing would probably go after me first, since I was right there. But I wasn't about to start thinking things like that. I neared the stone corner and slowly peered around. Trees, trees, more trees came into view until I saw something at the far end turning a corner. It wasn't a deer. It wasn't Bigfoot. It was a kid. I saw his back and feet as he turned the corner, but did not see his face. Whoever it was had been watching us and had heard our secret, <laughs> knew exactly what we had done and what was going on. If someone knew, then our whole club could be destroyed. And I was not about to allow that. Everybody, hurry up here! Some kid's been watching us! Everyone stood and raced up and out of Stonehenge. This way! I rounded the next corner and saw him again, this time disappearing into the woods. He was trying to get away, the little spy. Is there only one of them? I think so. If he tells, we're in lots of trouble. I know. The Shadow Club raced through the woods. As our eyes began to adjust to the dim light, we could see him just 20 feet in front of us. I raced at full speed. He was nearing the road. At last, I got close enough and dove on him, bringing him down. He was about my size, just a bit skinnier, a bit bonier. I rolled him over and looked at the face before me. I instantly knew who it was, and so did the rest of the Shadow Club. No, it's tight, Next chapter is called Tyson McGall. Get your hands off me, you idiot! Yelled Tyson. Oh my gosh, it's the slime ball, said Darren. 
Now we're in for it. What were you doing up there? I demanded, pinning his shoulders to the ground as hard as I could. Get off me, butthead! You're hurting me! I asked you a question. You're hurting me! Good. He'll hurt you more if you don't tell. Tyson didn't say a word. I'm warning you, Tyson. We have ways of making you talk, and you won't like any of them. I didn't see anything. Bull! Bring him back to Stonehenge, said O.P. To Stonehenge, echoed the rest. Yeah, bring him back to Stonehenge. And that's just what we did. I put him in a full Nelson. If you don't know what that is, that's a full Nelson. It's an illegal wrestling move, but pretty good for holding on to Tyson. He struggled, but Darren grabbed his feet, and we carried him back through the woods to Stonehenge. The fire was still at full blaze when we carried Tyson down into the stone foundation. We had stopped struggling some time ago. We let him go, and he stood, his back against the wall, with all seven of us standing in front of him. What is this? A gang? asked Tyson. He thought about that for a second, but let it fly out the other ear. There's seven of us, Tyson, I said, and only one of you. You'd better tell us what you saw. I wouldn't tell you if you're the last person on earth. Beat him up, yelled Jason, standing in the background, pounding his fist into his other hand. Make him talk. Yeah, yelled O.P. No, I said. I could see that being rough with Tyson just made him clam up even more. We needed a different approach. Listen, Tyson, we don't want to hurt you or anything. We're all friends, right? No, said Abby. Huh, I said we're all friends, right? Everyone reluctantly agreed. Now, why don't you just tell us what you saw? I backed up a little bit, giving Tyson some room. He looked around at us and seemed a bit less angry, although that crazy look he had in his eyes never went away. He looked at us for a long time and then said, All I saw was you guys laughing. That's all. I saw you guys laughing for a long time. That's all. You expect us to believe that? It's the truth! Then why did you run? I don't know, because you started chasing me. That's why. We chased you because you were spying on us. Well, I, I wanted to find out what you were laughing about, okay? That's all. Tyson looked at us all with that mean, dark look in his eyes and hung his head. I just wanted to find out. So I thought that maybe you were talking about me, and that's why you were laughing. Why would we talk about you? Because people talk about me. I hear it. They think I don't, but I do. They laugh at me all the time, and they call me Slimeball. Anyway, that's all I saw. Laughing. We don't believe you. Actually, I sort of half believed him and half didn't. What are you doing around here anyway? I live near here. Down that way. You're lying, said Randall. There are no houses around here. There's one on the cliff by the ocean. The lighthouse, said Jason. It's not a lighthouse anymore. I live there. If you don't know what a lighthouse is, there are things that on there. It's but the oftentimes cover. they'll have little houses next to them that you can't actually yeah, live in. The cover. And so they have like where the lighthouse keeper would live. Everyone was quiet for a while. Nobody knew what to say next. If Tyson was lying, there was nothing we could do about it. He'd never tell the truth, no matter what we did to him. All right, I don't care what you saw or what you heard, but I'll tell you one thing. If you so much as tell another living soul that you saw us all here, you'll be sorry. Do you swear never to tell anyone? Tyson looked down. Maybe. And there we stop. Because we are now officially in the good part of the book. Yeah. Yeah. 130 is your next stopping point.